Welcome to another Boost Your BIM Revit API instructional video. A while back I was asked if it would be possible to convert a Revit topography element into a massing family. Here's an example showing a simple mass that we will then convert into a set of massing surfaces using the API. I'll run a macro be prompted to select the topography surface and the result will be a new massing family loaded into the project and if I place an instance of this family You can see that this mass has been created with the geometry identical to that of the initial surface. So now let's take a look at how this was done. To start, the user was prompted to select an element, which in this case will be the topography surface. Next, we use the geometry property of that element to get the mesh, which is the object that contains the actual geometric data of the topography surface. If we look at the geometry property in the Revit API help file, we see that the geometry property returns a geometry element. And the help for the geometry element explains that the geometric primitives contained inside this element can be obtained directly using the capabilities of the I enumerable. What this means in our case is that we can use the link method first and find the first geometry object that's a mesh and get that in a single simple line as shown here. The geometry of the topography surface may have other elements as well but there will always be a mesh object and that mesh is what we will use to generate the elements in our massing family. The next step is to create a new document. A new f this will be a family document using the conceptual mass template. Start a new transaction and then inside this transaction we're going to iterate through all of the uh, mesh triangles inside the topography's mesh. Now you'll note that the mesh is in the project file and we've started a transaction inside the family file, all of that is perfectly fine to do in using the Revit API. So we're iterating using a, a for loop going from zero to be up to the number of triangles in the mesh, incrementing the counter each time through the loop. We'll get the triangle from the mesh corresponding to the current value of our counter. And next I'm going to call a new routine that I've written called make form. This is going to make the massing form element. We pass into this the family document and then the three vertices that define the meshes triangle. If we go down to look at the make form routine, we see that the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check the area of this triangle. As we'll see in some later cases, as the topography geometry gets more complex, you'll have a greater number of triangles, and in some cases these triangles will be incredibly small. For performance reasons, we may want to skip the triangles that are uh, smaller than a certain threshold. So what we can do is find the uh, two vectors uh, that def are defined by these points, and then use the cross product we look in the help file for the cross product. It will remind us we want to find the XYZ cross product method. It reminds us here that the uh, cross product returns a vector perpendicular to the two input vectors with a magnitude equal to the area of the parallelogram they span. Therefore, to find the area of the triangle, which would be half that of the parallelogram, we can take the cross product 
get its length, which is the magnitude of the vector, and divide by 2. And the result will be a uh, double value for the area of the triangle formed by these three points. In our case, if we I arbitrarily set a threshold of 10, and so if the area of the triangle is less than uh, 10 square feet, uh, we're going to abort out of this make form uh, routine by returning null. Assuming that the area is greater than 10, we will continue on. We are going to create a reference array, which is going to be used down here to call the new form by cap uh, method. And we're going to put three references into this array. We're going to make a curve by points between each of these three points. And then from that curve, get the geometry curve and then get the reference to that geometry curve, which is what we need to put into the reference array. We look at make curve by points. It's a pretty simple routine. What we do here is we pass in two points. We are going to create an array of reference points. And the array of reference points is going to be populated by calling new reference point with each of the two points passed in and then using that reference point array as the input to create a new curve by points. So this will create three curve by points for us and put the references to those curves into the reference array and then that reference array will be used to create the form by cap. Coming back up to our main method here, the last part we'll look at is uh, basically what we could think of as a uh, poor man's uh, progress bar. It's not really a progress bar, but I wanted to put a simple counter in here. Um, again, in a large mass or a large topography surface, we could have thousands or tens or hundreds of thousands of, um, of points and vertices and triangles, and we may not want to process all of those for performance reasons. You may want to do some iteration uh, to uh, set a different threshold for area uh, or something else to uh, get what you consider a reasonable number of uh, mesh surfaces generated. What I do here is I'm going to check every hundred uh, times through this loop. The percentage sign is the modulus operator, which returns the remainder when we divide two numbers. So when i equals 100, 200, 300, and so forth, that number divided by 100 will have no remainder. And therefore, we'll come into here. What we're doing here is creating a task dialog. But instead of creating task dialog dot show, as we would uh, might often do in a single line, in this case, I wanted to put in my own uh, or specify which buttons should be shown in the task dialog. To do this, I create the task dialog using the constructor on the lo this line here. Then next, specify the common buttons that the task dialog will show. We come back to the help file. We can see the list of common buttons. That include options like OK, Yes, No, and so forth. We specify the set of these buttons, delimiting them with the bar character. Next I'll specify the main instruction, which is the text in the main body of the dialog, where we show the current number we're at in the loop, the total number of triangles in the mesh, and then ask if you want to proceed. When we call taskdialog.show, it's going to return to us a task dialog result value, which we can come back to help file to see here. We're going to we're calling this version of task dialog dot show with no arguments. And we're going to get back a task dialog result, which will correspond to the uh, values based on the button that was pushed. So if the user pressed the no button, we get a task dialog result of no. And now we're called break, which just gets us out of this for loop and uh, completes the creation of the mass with however many uh, triangles have been processed at that point. So to see some of these more advanced features uh, at work, we'll bring up a more complex 
uh, topography surface, this time from the uh, Revit sample project. So now when I run the command, it processes the first 100 triangles. Now it tells us 100 out of 12,313 triangles have been processed. I can click yes. It will continue adding uh, more surfaces to the, ma to, the, uh, to the mass that's being created. Things will start to slow down as the number of triangles and the amount of data uh, increases. And so this time when I'm given the option, I'll click the no button that will complete the creation of the mass and we can place it to take a look at what we have. So I'll click no, the mass will be created. We can zoom in to take a look at that instance of the mass. You can see lots and lots of triangles be being created. Some of the smaller triangles in the middle here being excluded because their area was uh, smaller than our threshold of 10. And uh, clearly the entire mass was not created because of the number of triangles that we specified after 300 uh, triangles of the mesh to stop the processing there. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and found something uh, potentially interesting or useful about creating massing geometry and processing the uh, mesh inside the geometry of the Revit Topo surface.